So we had quite a lot of fun in this section and before we jump on to the next section, I thought this last video of this section should be really, really cool. So in this uh, section, one thing that more we are going to do is something really interesting. Let me show you a little bit more of the stuff. And by the way, from the last video, uh, notice here that says time.now, but there are a lot more additional stuff that you can do. Like for example, you can go ahead and say that I want to use a nanosecond, I want to use a Unix nano, which actually more precisely gives you the time and the bigger the number, the seed value is bigger and random and every time it's different. That's why I used a uh, Unix nano, which is a common practice in Golang. Uh, but I think if you will use time.now nanosecond, that uh, should also give you fairly a decent random value. Anything, that's all great. So now let's just say you want to build an application which whenever you open up just gives you a time on this command line prompt. Maybe, maybe for some reason you want to build an application. So Go actually allows you to give or gives you the tools which can help you to build EXEs, the executable for Windows, the Linux executable files and for Mac files as well. And for this we need to go back up here at the top and we have to say go env. This alone is a command that you can run and can find a lot about the Golang itself. For example, at the top, uh, this is where we shoot the command Golang, go in V, and we can see that we have modules, the architecture, where the caches are, the environments are, and a whole bunch of other things. But where I'm interested is, is this line, where it says, uh, where it is? There it is. Uh, just a second, there we go. Go OS. Now don't confuse it with the Go host OS. No, you don't want that. You want the Go OS. Now here in my case, it says Darwin because Mac is considered as Darwin. You're probably might say Linux or might say Windows if you are on that operating system. And using this Go OS command, you can actually build for different operating system regardless of where you are. So for example, uh, let me just go ahead and clean this up. And the command to build it is really simple. You have to just say go build and it's automatically going to find the main.go main file and will compile all of that. In case you have other files as well, it will just do everything for you. But before running this file, if you just go ahead and say, I want to change a value of go OS and just use an equal and I'm on a Mac, so I'll start with Windows. There we go and put up space. Now go OS, when I say Windows, that means I want to build this application, but I want to build using a parameter go OS Windows. So what it's going to do if I hit the enter, this is going to take a small time, but it's going to build an application and notice here it says mytime.exe. So in theory, or in practical also, if I would be on Windows, I can just double click and run this program. Of course, it's not gonna do much apart from just showing me the time, but yeah, it is something. In case you want to build it for Linux or if I'm on Darwin, I can just go ahead and say Darwin, but since I'm already on Darwin, I don't need to pass on this flag. But if I want to build it for Linux also, I can go ahead and say, hey, just go ahead and give me a file or a build of this program into Linux as well. And it's going to give you this my time, which is executable for Linux itself. So I told you, this is so much fun. And as you're going to get more knowledge of how to build or handle more stuff, you can actually create a standalone program in the Go itself. It is so much fun to do that. Now, your job is to find more about the parameters that I showed you. So I told you that there is so much in this environment. So go ahead, take a look at least. In case you want to explore something more, go ahead and do a little bit more research on that. And I'm gonna catch you up in the next section. Let's catch up there.